right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right in these perilous times. Now, today I want to discuss about the power of the tongue. You know, let us speak life and not speak death. You know, it's very important how you speak to people, what you say, how you say it, who you're saying it to, and the intentions of what you're speaking on. You know, God really needs us to tame our tongue and to really be disciplined in our speech and not to bite our tongue, but be truthful. You know what I'm saying? We could be truthful in a way that doesn't have to be arrogant or haughty or that know-it-all spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way you speak to people, what you talk about, man, is everything. Also, how it's being received is important as well. Because you have to always benefit the listener. The listener, you have to benefit the audience. You have to benefit uh, the person that's taking their time out to hear what you have to say. If you're not going to say anything that's going to better that person or better the conversation, then there's nothing to be said or added to it. You know what I mean? It's very important for us to also not have too much of a big mouth, you know. A lot of times in certain situations, we're not going to always say every single detail about something or speak on everything that we feel is necessary. Because sometimes, depending on that moment or situation or the heat of the moment, it's only suitable to just say this one thing at this time, you know. Because everyone has this obsession of, you know, keeping it real and always speaking their mind no matter what. But in certain cases, it's very important to be mindful and discerning on when you're speaking a bit too much or when you're saying a little bit too much details or um, when you should, when you, you know, you got to know when to shut up too. You know what I mean? In the process of being a good communicator and speaking, you have to also have the skill of shutting up and listen. You have to also have the skill of, you know, just being silent as well in certain scenarios. You know what I'm saying? But all in all, power is power of the tongue, man. You know, you're either going to speak life to someone or you're going to speak death. There's no way around it, you know? And, we have to be mindful about the things that we talk about. Are we talking about beneficial things? Are we speaking about good things? Are we speaking about things that have substance? Or are we backbiting? Are we gossiping? Are we talking about someone? Is it malicious gossip? Is it? Are we lying or are we misleading somebody? Are we giving out misinformation or missed it or disinformation? You know, we have to be very aware of how we say things and what we're actually saying. Are the things that we say are they actually truthful? Do they actually hold weight? Is it valid? Does it actually, is it something we can research that we're speaking about? You know what I mean? Because some people have verbal diarrhea. Well, they'll just say a whole bunch of nothing. They'll just say a bunch of big words and then leave the listeners, you know, high and dry still. Because you didn't drop any truth. You just spoke a whole bunch of nothing. And we have to always speak on things that are beneficial to one another. And we can't just always have a motor mouth. There's always a way about wanting to express how you feel about something without being too belligerent about it. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to just discuss about the power in the tongue, man. <laughs> it holds life or it holds death, man. You know, with Christ, he spoke life to people. You are healed. Your faith made you well. You know, Christ spoke life into people. And that's what we have to do if we're going to be like Christ. You know, the scripture said to be Christ-like. So if we're going to do that and be an example of that, we have to speak life into people. We cannot spread discouragement. We cannot spread lies. You cannot spread falsehood. You cannot spread misinformation. Everything has to be truthful. Everything has to be honest. Everything got to be solid. Everything got to be pure. Everything got to be thorough. We got to speak life into people. We got to speak encouragement into people. We got to speak hope into people. And not false hope and all that mumble jumble stuff and all that motivational speaker stuff. Just like real hope in a realistic, grounded sense. Giving them something optimistic to look forward to in their current situation. Because the problem with a lot of motivational speakers or lecturers is that sometimes they're so obsessed with being theatrical about how they speak. And they're so obsessed with just getting out their words that they're not even being mindful of the listener's situation. They're not being mindful of what the audience is going through. You know what I mean? So when you speak to someone that's in a vulnerable situation or you speak to someone that feels stuck or stagnant, you have to just be straight to the point with those type of people. Don't try to be all uh, extra theatrical with it because what happens is all those antics that you're doing communication wise is throwing off their attention span. It's throwing off their intentions of wanting to listen to you and taking what you're giving them and running off with it. You know what I mean? So we have to stop misleading people. We have to stop lying to people. We have to stop uh, 
giving people false hope. Y'all giving them real hope. You know what I mean? Real encouragement. Real good news. The real gospel. And the teachings of Jesus Christ. All right? We can't tell people what they want to hear. We have to tell people what they need to hear. Okay? Because what you want to hear is just going to stroke your little ego and gas you up and have you thinking you better what you are. What you need to hear is going to humble you. It's going to make you correct yourself. It's going to be edification. It's going to make you want to do better. It's going to make you want to have a different perspective on how you're going about things. You know what I mean? So we have to speak life into people, man. As you can see, you see so much people speaking death, man. Especially through the music. The music today is so toxic and so negative and so dark that it embraces death and sexual morality and it embraces violence and murder see that's speaking death like when you hear all that drill music right you hear all that rap music like oh i'm gonna kill such and such oh i'm gonna catch breast slip and da 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 that's speaking death that's not speaking life when was the last time you heard a song and the person's like yeah yeah i'm gonna love this person and yeah yeah i'm gonna give this person a hug like even though that might come off as corny or cheesy to you just think about that you see how people don't like to listen to positive things people don't like to listen to things that adds to life People like to listen to things that take away from life. You see what I'm saying? People embrace death, killing, and violence. Nobody embraces love, longevity, you know, hope, prosperity, peace, love, tranquility. No one is into that type of stuff, man. We have to speak life into people. You get what I'm saying? We got to speak life. You know what I'm saying? And with, my, with me doing this whole podcasting, all these things with my platform, that's what my platform is about. I'm trying to speak life into people because I don't know who's listening. I don't know who's watching my stuff. I never know. So I have to always be mindful when I go out and do these things because I don't know what the listener's situation is. So I can't come on here and just cap and lie and exaggerate. I can't do that because that's not God's work. And also, I'm going to have my, you know, I'm going to, you know, I have to deal with that. I have to hold myself accountable on that. You get what I'm saying? On every episode I do, I'm always going to talk about baptism and stuff like that because I want to speak life into people. You get what I'm saying? That's what this is about. We have to speak life onto one another. All right, spreading all that negativity, all that hate and stuff, all that jealousy, all that violence. We got to start speaking those things over people. All right, the power of the tongue is real. All right, what you say, how you say it. I mean, all those things matter. Communication is power, man. All right, and. Everyone likes to act like they're just so real and just so thick skinned and everybody's so tough. But everybody is sensitive in a certain way, bro. Certain things do trigger us. Certain things do got us feel, get us feeling a certain type of way. You know, and you shouldn't walk on eggshells because you'll never get truth out that way. But you should be mindful about how you say things, how you go about it. You know, that same pride and energy you keep with wanting to. You know, keep it all real and obsessed. You have to stand on that when people hold you accountable for what you're saying. You have to stand on that when you get blowback for saying a certain thing or misleading people or whatnot. You get what I'm saying? You cannot run on a mountaintop and scream, yell, and all this rah-rah stuff. And then when you get those feedback, those <laughs> that blowback, you want to run off and hide now and try to downplay what you were saying. Like, nah, keep the same energy. You see, always always stand on what you say. Don't be a coward about what you're speaking on and how you're going about it. Always stand on what you say. All right? Because in a sense, when it comes to this whole communication thing, your platform is speaking, sometimes people can take your words and use it against you. Those things are real. I mean, it even happened to Christ. Because when Christ, when Jesus was dealing with the Pharisees and the scribes and the law debaters, sometimes they got manipulative and sarcastic with Jesus. Sometimes they would they would take what he said and throw it on him. And Christ would understand that he would see through those things. Because Christ understood when you speak in life, when you speak in the gospel, you're speaking the things of God, how people will use that against you because of a certain thing you did or a certain thing you did. Like for instance, if I go out and do something in the public, someone gonna be like, Oh Jarvis, uh you're supposed to believe in God. Why are you doing that? Da-da-da. You said that Da-da-da. you see how people can be manipulative at times? That shows you that people aren't genuine listeners. Sometimes people will see how you go about things and hear what you say, but the moment you make a little mistake or choice or error or you kind of do something your own little thing, watch how people use what you've said and throw it back at you. That just shows you that their intentions were never pure, their intentions were never good. You see, so you have selective listeners. 
you have to be, be watchful of that. If you're going to do all this communication stuff, this speaking stuff, all this uh, uh, platform stuff, you're going to go about these things. You have to be mindful of what comes with it as well. Because, see, the problem with all of this is that everybody wants all the subscribers. Everybody wants all the likes. Everyone wants all the views. Everyone wants all the clicks. But nobody wants the accountability. Nobody wants the responsibility. No one wants the blowback. No one wants to deal with uh, hateful comments or death threats or anything like that. No one wants to deal with those things. But that's what comes with this. All right? Especially when, you, when, you t- when you're doing this, this work of God. When you're doing this, this, the will of the Father. Man, them death threats going to pull up, bro. Trust Christ even dealt with it. Them disciples, they dealt with it too. That's why you notice every time Jesus went about doing things on feet, he had to always get up out of dodge. Hey, whenever he did a miracle, hey, don't tell nobody I did this for you. He was circumspect. He moved as a serpent. He he was gentle as a dove. See, Christ couldn't stick on, stay on the scene for so long because he knew the block was hot. He had to get up out of dodge. I'm going to drop off the word of God. I'm going to do a miracle. I got to go. See, he, he did what he had to do. He had to leave on the spot because them death threats was all around the disciples of Christ. You see what I'm saying? When you're really doing the will of God, when you're really doing the work, man, and you're really speaking truth to power, people are going to try to kill you for that stuff. People are going to try to manipulate you. People are going to try to take away things from you. People are going to try to hinder your legacy, your image, your character. They're going to attack you in many different ways, bro. But remember, the word of God says that my enemies come one way and they flee seven different ways. So understand that when you're really walking in the, in the light of God, when you're really walking in the presence of the Lord, God will take care of your enemies. Remember, vengeance is his. We don't have to always go back with every single person. We don't have to always go back and forth with every single person. We let the Lord handle that. All right? When you go about speaking and doing the will of God and doing all this, man, you've got to understand what also comes with this as well. That's why we have to always speak life in the people. All right? We have to always center everything around the kingdom of heaven. Let nothing... Be centered around that know-it-all spirit and, oh, I know more than you do and all that. Oh, don't get into all that. You see what I'm saying? Because now you're not speaking life. Now you're speaking competition. Now you're speaking pride. Now you're speaking ego. Now you're speaking narcissism. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you notice with a lot of these people out here with these real big platforms, a lot of them have that narcissism and they have that pride, that ego, that real self-indulgent spirit, that real just... You know, they, they they don't have light, man. They're empty vessels, you know. There's a lot of empty vessels out here with all these big platforms and nothing to really say, nothing to say and nothing to stand on. They got no substance. They got no light, all right? We have to speak life, all right? We have to speak life in the people. We have to be the light of the world. We got to be the salt of the earth, all right? We have to speak life. We cannot walk around spread negativity and all that foolishness we got to be real thorough with this you get what i'm saying so always be careful how you speak to people how go how you go about it understand the people you're dealing with understand the environment you're in understand those things when you're going about speaking have wisdom with it ask god to guide your tongue ask god to guide your mouth ask the lord to guide your speech ask the lord to guide you through all of that okay do not lean on your own understanding all right trust the lord with all your heart you know what i'm saying Pray before you speak on something. Pray before you say something to a certain person. You might say something hurtful to somebody because out of your emotions, you might be ready to cut somebody out. You might be ready to let someone have it. But you got to understand, man, you can't be so impulsive all the time. man. It's a certain way you go about these things when it comes to communication. All right. So I just want to talk about, man, that the power of the tongue holds life and death, bro. Before you go about in life, man, you got to ask yourself, am I speaking life in the people? Or am I speaking death, man? You got to ask yourself those things, man. You want to speak life into people. You want to give people the light. You want to give people the truth. You want to give people hope. You want to give people reality. You want to give people love. You know what I'm saying? Those are the things you're supposed to be speaking. All this negative stuff, all this toxic stuff, all this pop culture stuff, all this social media stuff, that's, that, that stuff is speaking death over people, bro. All right? You're killing the person's confidence. You're killing the person's well-being. You're killing the person's mental health you abuse you verbally abusing them you see that's how you speak death upon people you say harsh things to people you say things to believe to belittle people you're saying you're ridiculing people you're mocking people you're trying to make people look crazy you're trying to make people look soft you're trying to bully people you're verbally abusing people see you speak in death man that's not the way to go when it comes to this communication all right let's all speak life into each other let's all better each other empower each other 
I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you repent. I pray that you start your life over. I pray that you get new beginnings and everything changes for you. And start speaking life unto yourself and to others, straight up. All right. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.